So I've been seeing videos for the Helios 58 F2, this really cool vintage lens all over the internet for a few years now, and finally decided to pick one up myself. And one of the other things I found when doing the research was this 3D printed lens housing that Mountain Breeze Studio has available for free through uh, a bunch of different websites like Thingiverse, uh, even on their YouTube page, they give the files out for free. So I decided to print it myself, and in today's video, I'm going to talk about the process of 3D printing this lens housing. Yes, there is a Helios 58 inside this lens housing. So I'll go over the process of making it, why you would want to do this 3D printed lens housing, and some of the extra things that I ended up printing that were not included in the STL files that you can print for free, and everything will be in the description below. So without further ado, Let's hit it. Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jeff Fagan. I'm a filmmaker and DP based in South Florida. And on this channel, I like to talk a lot about filmmaking, whether it's camera gear, lenses, computers for editing, pretty much anything that revolves around filmmaking. So if that's something that you're interested in, please feel free to subscribe and see more videos like this on the channel when they come out. So let's talk about 3D printing. I ended up buying this Flash Forge Adventure 3, which you can kind of see behind me. And it's a really good 3D printer, really great quality for beginners, medium level printers, and it works really well. So I ended up picking it up off of Amazon when I ordered the Helios 58 off of eBay. I knew the Helios was gonna take around a month to get here as a lot of them come from Russia, and that's how you're gonna get them pretty cheap, getting them through eBay and getting them shipped over from Russia as they are just abundant over there as it is a Russian lens. So while I was waiting to get the Helios in, I ended up 3D printing all the parts I needed, which I'm glad I did in the meantime, because it's not something that you can do in a day. To print all the parts I needed, it took about five days, uh, especially with the kind of infill you need. When you're printing parts that you actually wanna use, you actually wanna make sure that there's more uh, plastic filament inside the actual units. That way they don't break easily. And I learned my lesson on the first few that I made as there are certain things you can't can't 3D print, like the screws, um, the EF mount that you need for the lens, stuff like that you can't 3D print. And when you start adding the screws in, for instance, if you don't have enough infill, it starts breaking. So you want a good amount of infill to be able to do this. And this printer prints everything out really well. So I'll have a link to everything in the description below. So if you wanna look at things while I'm talking about them, you know where you can find them. First things first, I've been really happy with this 3D printed lens. And interestingly enough, I actually removed one of the parts that you're supposed to print with this setup because it kind of got in the way and actually prevented this thing from focusing smoothly. Because as you can see, I really have no issues focusing uh, at all or doing the aperture. And with, I'll actually go grab it. It's this piece right here. And it looks really cool. Uh, but other than looking cool, uh, it kind of is less functional than cool looking. So I decided to actually just not use this at all. So this right here is five out of the six items that you print from the housing. You have the focus ring right here, you have the aperture ring, and then you also have this little silver gray thing right here, which has the markings for your focus, for where you are in your aperture. And so that's all 3D printed. There's two things that I ended up 3D printing that aren't part of this kit. Again, in the description below, they will be. And one of them is this EF uh, rear lens mount. Uh, really easy to print, really thin. Um, again, available for free. The other was this all-in-one printable lens cap. And I was really surprised how well this works, especially because it didn't take that long to print. It took me about three and a half hours to print this, and you don't have to print a bunch of pieces. It actually all prints as one piece and is functional. You do squish these down and it locks on the lens. So uh, I was really happy with that uh, as well. As far as things you have to buy, you have to buy all of these little nub screws in here, which essentially lock the 3D printed pieces onto the lens itself. By doing that, you are going to mark up the original lens inside of here. But again, that's all being covered over this lens housing. So if you don't plan on taking this lens housing off, especially if things break, you can just reprint new pieces, then you're fine. But if you ever do want to undo this lens housing, you'll be able to and the lens will work, but you will have scratches from doing this 
this modification, so just be aware that that will happen. So the three things you have to buy, you have to buy the M42 to EF mount, which I think it's good that you don't 3D print this because since it's metal, you know it's gonna be nice and sturdy. You have to buy the two different sets of screws. One of the sets you don't need if you do what I did because it's really just to keep this right here, these screws right here. It's really just to screw this on here. You do need the grub screws and those are the most important. Another thing you're gonna need to get is step up rings. Now, again, if you're not gonna go for that and you're gonna go for this kind of situation, what I ended up doing is I got step up rings from 43 millimeters to 62 millimeters, which brings you right above the 3D plastic. And then I have another step up ring, which goes from 62 millimeters to 72 millimeters. Uh, and that's all I use because all of my filters are 72 millimeters and it works out perfectly perfectly when you do it like that. Uh, for the original mod, they do recommend going from 43 millimeters all the way to 82. Uh, I ended up going to 77, even though I had an 82 millimeter step up ring. Uh, I just didn't have a lens cap at the time to go to 82 and I didn't, felt like I didn't need it. Especially now that I found these 3D printed lens caps, that's not really an issue. You can go to where you want. I do recommend going to the 62 millimeter mark at least. That way it gets you all the way to the tip of the 3D print. Doing the 3D print was relatively easy. I did one piece at a time and you know, it took a few days, but the quality was just amazing off of this printer. As you can see, you don't have to do the same colors I did. I, I'm actually not super stoked on the colors I went with and I'll probably change it later on down the line, but I wanted to see if this was practical. So let's talk about practicality of this lens housing. Why would you want it? Well, first off, you probably noticed there are markings so you can do a follow focus and it has a built-in follow focus gear on both the focus ring and the aperture. Now, the focus makes the most sense because as you can see, as you're focusing, even though the front barrel does move, you're not messing with the location of the focus ring. So putting a follow focus on here is probably the main reason why you'd want to do this modification. Now, when it comes to the aperture, well, it does move as you focus because the front element moves as you focus. So you may, it's really more for show, I think. You can put a follow focus on here if you're staying at the exact same, I guess, fo focus. If you're not really messing with the focus, you could put a follow focus on the aperture. But for me, I don't think I'll ever really use the follow focus on the aperture. It'll really just be specifically for focusing. But if you have a good quality printer like the Flash Forge Adventure 3, the quality of this follow focusing mod on here is just fantastic. Uh, not only did Mountain Breeze Studios do a great job making this print, but having a good 3D printer does make the difference. I had a really small children's 3D printer that I first tried to print a lot of this stuff on, and the quality just wasn't that great. And weirdly enough, it was about the same price as this printer over here. There are a bunch of different printers. You can get really great quality printers for around the $200 price point, but for me, I liked having this enclosed printer behind me. It looks really nice. The software that it has included works for both Mac and Windows. It's really easy to use the software and print wirelessly from your computer directly to this printer. So I do highly recommend this. Again, link will be in the description below. Overall, using this mod, not only for the functionality of the follow focus, but just the look of transforming this lens into somewhat of a more modern looking lens on the outside. I think this 3D print is absolutely worth doing it if you have a 3D printer. I will be doing a full review, but today's video is just to talk about the 3D printing and the process. So look forward to seeing a full review on the Helios 58 millimeter. I'll be doing it with using the Red Komodo and the Pocket 6K as those are my two main cameras now. Uh, but otherwise, I have really enjoyed using this. Uh, in the review, I'll probably have the new colors that I decide to go with. Uh, I just haven't officially decided what I want to do. I actually have the one of the original ones I printed behind me where I went orange and blue. Uh, b believe it or not, this white, although it looks probably okay on camera, didn't come out exactly how I wanted it to. There is, it just shows some of the issues you can have with 3D printing. Just the tip of it didn't come out that great and the rest of it did. But for me, if a little bit's messed up, you might as well just reprint the whole thing. But it's been a really great process. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me below. And links to everything will be in the description from what you need to buy on Amazon to what you need to print and the different stuff like this lens cap or the rear lens cap 
back here. So all that will be in the description. It's a really fun process to 3D print and I'll be doing a lot more videos about 3D printed stuff and filmmaking because believe it or not, there is a lot that you could 3D print that will help the lives of us filmmakers. Mountain Breeze Studio, the guy who made this mod, actually has a decent amount of filmmaking items available for free. So definitely give his channel a look, give him a subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's a little bit different from the norm. If you guys got value out of today's video, please make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to see more videos like this on the channel. Until next time, thank you for watching everybody. My name is Jeff Fagan, and I will see you in the next video.